alive now. <clears throat> this is so weird, this setup. I don't know if it's accurate. Hello, hey, I'm doing this live stream again and this is always just so uh, nerve wracking at times just because I, I don't know. This is so weird. Oh, oh, geez, and now it's like going back. I'm hearing my voice again. So I don't know, can you hear me? Uh, Kristen, anyone, Adolfo, we're live, glad to be here. <laughs> can you guys hear me okay? This is... This live stream thing never works for me. So if you guys can hear me and I can see that it's a little bit delayed uh, through here. All right. So I'm just waiting just to see if you guys, if there's some, any sort of hearing through there. But I don't know. Is there anything, you know, I'm just kind of one, I'm hanging out. I've been watching TV for a lot of the day and I just want to... Uh, Chill. I just I just want to come and do some drawing. Nothing in particular. Uh, this is something that I just do a lot. Is just I just randomly just drawing faces and just moving my hand around. I just find that it's almost in a way therapeutic. Just to just to draw something. You know. Again, not, never knowing what it's gonna actually be um, at times. And these are like my just random doodles and drawing. Um, but yeah, I just thought just hanging out, chatting, if you guys want any questions about anything, I'm looking over at my screen, the, the delay, it's got a little bit of a delayed response, so I'll, I'll get to your question, but I just kind of wanted to, uh, see if you guys just kind of wanted to chat, you know, about anything, it's just kind of like a little fireside chat or a Cintiq chat, we could call it that. Um, you know, it's funny when I, when I draw, I don't always have the vision in my mind. If I'm working on something specific, someone gives me a task and says, Hey, we want you to design this, or this needs to be done. I'll, um, I can start to work on that, but otherwise I like to just move my hand around the page and see what happens. Cause even at this point, when I have like a drawing like this, um, you can have, you can have, uh, so all of a sudden I can throw someone's head just right here and then turn it at that angle and all of a sudden it says something. But then all of a sudden I could just put this head and get this head coming out here and doing that and now it says something different. You know, so there's always going to be something different just even in that simple movement of the head when you're doing something like that. So there's no real restrictions. I think the thing that I'm always looking for is just trying to avoid making everything, uh, if you guys are familiar with just my teachings, just avoiding the ladder. I just don't want everything so even in the design and that's where things can become just a little bit more dynamic. And yeah, this is Autodesk Sketchbook. That's what I'm using. Um, through here, what kind of TV have you been watching? Just a lot of the the news. I've been watching um, a lot of documentaries, a lot of uh, Netflix and Hulu and Amazon and all those guys. And I've just been just trying to find some uh, cool things. I just finished watching um, Hunters, which was a great documentary, which then got me onto this other thing about just uh, like hunting, you know, Nazis and everything got me onto that whole show again. I'd seen it before, uh, but I didn't watch all of it because the, the seasons ended, but it's called um, Hunting Hitler. And man, you're just like, geez, man, all these freaking guys survived the war. You know they did. It's just there's so much proof now. And it's just like, that was a real shocker watching that. Um, what I do, oh, I watched a great movie the other night with my son and my wife called it's um, about time. Really awesome time travel sort of thing, but in it done in a whole different way about this guy who learns that his family can time travel, just the men in the family. And uh, it's just so cool. I mean, what a great concept. And the concept, really, the whole heart of the story was live every day as if you're living it for the second time. So you go through the first part, you go through your day, like you go through whatever your day is, 
And all of a sudden from there you go, okay, I wasn't really paying attention to everything. I didn't listen to what people were saying and I missed out on this and I missed out on that. But then you think about it, I'm living every day like I'm living it for the second time. How would I do something different? Maybe you responded to someone in a weird way through Facebook or Instagram. You are dang it, why did I say that? Why did I do that? I wasn't, I shouldn't have said that. But now, so before you do things and take actions, you start to say to yourself, what pretend I'm living this day for the second time. I've already experienced it the first time where I wasn't where I messed up. But now what am I gonna do? And it, it's a great concept. So that was a real cool thing. Um yeah, so I want to see if there's any questions. I'm just sort of like hanging out and I just kind of want to say what I'm doing right now, there's nothing in particular. And and I find that I like just sort of just, again, it's called just random doodling. And if you guys are familiar with my book, you'll, you'll be familiar with that term. And that's what it's all about. It's just like you don't know where things are going to take you. And that's sort of like the, the fun exploration of it. Because again, I can just start with the shape. Sometimes I do this. I'm just going to start with anything. You're like going, what the hell is this guy drawing? But just from that, I'm looking at that and going, and I start to see it's it's not just drawn from that um, method of just find an outside of a shape and start to build a character within that. This becomes so much more abstract to where it forces you to invent things that you wouldn't necessarily do. Again, it's not just looking at a blob, but so when I look at this, this could be the back view of someone, it could be an animal, it could be the side view, but what I'm almost like looking at right now, I kind of like see this as a foot coming up through there. And this is where that drawing just starts to turn into something. But then in my mind, when I've done this, I, st I got to start thinking about, um, and this is something I'm creating a bunch of videos right now for a schoolism, a new class that I'm doing. So get it, be excited for that. I'm super excited about it. Um, but what I, what, what I go by when I'm drawing is WTF. Now it's not what the F, you know, what the fuck are uh, you thinking? But that's what you want to think about. And you got to think about what is your character wanting? What is your character thinking? And what is your character feeling? And you're not going to go through all those three emotions at the same time. That's not the goal. You don't want to just because you're not going to have all those thoughts at the same time. But we may want something. We have intention. And you've got to look at when you're drawing people as human nature. What it is that you do? So you say to yourself, you know, often I'm wanting something. Man, I'm wanting a Big Mac right now. I just, I'm wanting that. So all of a sudden your mind starts to think about that and you start to put things in motion. Before you know it, you're in the car. Before you know it, you're picking up your Big Mac. So that could be this want, or you could want to touch that dog. And I want to pet that dog. Is he, is he going to bite? It could be something like that. But what is your character thinking? Your character could be thinking just a lot of different things. What do you think? What are you thinking about when you're sitting there? If you just, all of a sudden you just, Watch a plane go by. What are you thinking about? Are you thinking about, I wonder what would happen if that plane just blew up in the sky just now? Or I wonder where those people are going, you know, and your head and your emotion and your mannerism is going to be a lot different. So, and then you've got to think, what's your character feeling? And these are all, again, these different emotions. They're feeling sad. They're feeling happy. They're feeling content. It's the, uh, it's really the process of like the verb adjectivity that I talk about is just mixing a verb with an adjective. Uh, let me see, there was a question here. Are there days when you feel more productive or less so and do you ever take off from drawing? Uh, yeah, absolutely, I do. There's days where I wanna draw. Like right now I was feeling, I was downstairs just watching TV. I've been watching TV most of the day and I've been hanging out with my family, but I'm just like, I just got the itch to draw. You know, my wife's working on a puzzle. I'm just like, I'm gonna draw. Um, so no, you get those feelings, but treat everything like it's a season. We, we have seasons. Oranges have a season. Apples have a season. You're an artist. You're entitled to a season. So if there's times where you don't want to draw, don't draw. You're not going to benefit yourself. or You're not going to gain any knowledge. You know those times when in school when you were told to, to read? And you're just like, I have no interest in that book. I don't want to read that book. That is so boring. How much of that information did you ever take in? Or that show that you were watching where you weren't really paying attention to because you didn't care about it? Or that how much information did you take in? You don't. So you just start to take in information when you're excited about something, when you're enthusiastic about something. So I would encourage you not to be learning if you're not in the right frame of mind. And you're going to get into that right frame of mind. 
anyway, I started this drawing like you guys have just been watching right now with, um, with yeah, it was just nothing. So now I'm just trying to think what what else could this guy be doing? You know, I'm almost like running out of room here, but I feel like, well, what if this guy was, I don't know, maybe is going to be holding something. Or, let me see if I could just uh, reduce this back here. Let me just pull back on that so I could just finish the rest of the drawing. Again, I don't know what it's going to be uh, through here, but maybe what if this guy is flipping in the air and, and is a detective? Uh, yeah. <laughs> this is the thing. All of a sudden, this guy's some sort of detective. Why not? You know, giving him a little bit of action and is just, uh, he's just jump, he's jumping over something. Maybe is is jumping over. Uh, he, he doesn't want to, he doesn't want to hit the poor little cat that's sort of like sitting there. So he just jumped over that cat through here. I don't know. Why not? Meow. All right. Uh, there's a horrible cat, but that's why he jumped over and now is looking, but he's angry because he's still after the person that he wanted to um, attack, you know, or, you know, get through there. And he's got his teeth and he's grinning, you know, he's feeling angry. That's what he's feeling. What is he wanting? He's wanting to shoot that guy over there. That's why he's doing it. You know, he just wants to do something like that. Maybe he's got a jacket on or something, and it's flying back there. I don't know. This is this is like the random sketching, draw, drawing around. Join in, guys, if you're hanging out. Just join in. Uh, my throat hurts a bit. I wanted to doodle right on, uh, but didn't feel like it this morning. Just watch cartoons and was on Discord today. All right. Well, now it's time to draw. Just we're just sitting here drawing. I just saw my son is in his room and is talking to a friend of his and they're having a Netflix party. So they're all watching the same Netflix show as they're watching. They sit there and they can chat together. Things are going to change from this, man. I feel like the world's going to become so much more connected during this time. I'm looking at the positive, the bright side on all of this. Again, as long as I know there's hardships and I know there's tough things going on and people are losing work, I'm losing work. It's happening to everyone. There's things happening. But I think having that right mindset and the, embracing the positivity of all this and knowing that innovation is going to come from this and the whole country, the whole world is going to be more prepared for next time because there's going to be another virus. This is the, the, the last test right here. This was probably had the, the Ebola. We had the SARS. Now we have this and now we're being prepared for the next big thing that's going to happen. And the world is going to be prepared as a whole. So I kind of look at this as like, thank goodness. Thank goodness. Uh, my brother gave me a gift card. Think I might end up using it for Steven's book. Hey, I would do that, Sean. <laughs> and if you get it from me on my website, I'll sign it and do a drawing for you. But if you get it on Amazon, then it just kind of comes blank. All right, so what are we doing here? We're just, just doing unconscious doodling. We're just kind of sketching, seeing what happens. What I like to do a lot of times in my unconscious doodling is I'm just drawing anything because I don't want to have the pressure of trying to draw something. This is where you want to just relax and have fun and just like not, because sometimes when you put that pressure on yourself of trying to draw something, oh my God, I'm trying to draw that elephant in the room doing this, doing that, whatever they may be doing, all of a sudden you start to give yourself the pressure and then the drawing doesn't turn out the way you want it to. And then it's not looking just right. And you start to go, oh my God, what's going on with my drawing? It's all going horribly wrong. Let's see what's going on with this guy. This guy could be, maybe this guy's got his arms crossed now. He's up there and it's just kind of standing strong and standing firm through here. Maybe this guy has a little bit of a buzz cut through there and he doesn't really have that much of a brain. So we're going to just knock off his brain capacity up there, make his head just a little bit smaller. He's been in a few bar fights, so we're going to bust his nose and we're going to break his nose just a little bit, make it a little bit flat through there. And then from here, I don't know, maybe he's just angry or maybe, maybe he's happy. Why not? Why not? Make him happy. And then what I'm also playing around with, again, you guys who follow my course and schoolism and everything else in my book, I talk about avoiding the ladder um, and the quadrants. So playing around with the quadrants, we want to make sure we're considering all that in our drawings. All right. Again, this, this is where you're just trying to find the feeling. I don't know what's going to come from this. If you guys have any questions, we're just having a Cintiq uh, chat here, like a little fireside chat, just hanging out. If you if you want to draw, maybe this guy's wearing just uh, real short shorts. It's got like those little dolphin shorts, and 
and his shirt's too small up here so you can see his little belly button in there. This is where you just kind of get into those moving your arm around. That's the, that's the whole idea. See what kind of happens. Um, I use it often too. Fantastic advice, but don't take my word for it. <laughs> All right, uh, yeah, I'm just moving around. So you guys are watching just um, unconscious doodling here. I'm just seeing what gets created. And this is where fun ideas come from. You know, when I have ideas for shows, sometimes I don't really do that or anything. You know, I'm not in the, I'm actually working on a show right now I'm gonna be pitching. But I, oftentimes I'm not in that frame of mind and I don't wanna do that. And I'm not trying to create a new comic or a graphic novel. I don't do any comic for that matter. But I do like to think of, that's a cool character. That could be something someday. And that's when I'll save the drawings because I don't know what they turn into. Like I just did this and I go, what if that guy's head, forehead went way out there? Why not? That's the beautiful thing. Why not? Let's get his eyes in there. Let's put a little bit of eye. That was his ear. Let's actually make his bridge of his nose. He's got the skull underneath there, but let's just make the bridge of the nose just very flat through there. And this guy's got this crazy cranium of a head. What if this guy has an underbite? That's what I want to think about. This guy has an underbite. So that bottom of that is coming out through there. His jaw is being popped out through here. I know that I got the corner of his jaw through there. If there's any questions, guys, we're just hanging out. Fire off some questions. Uh, do you always draw with construction or just sketch? I draw with construction in my mind, um, but I'm just sketching. So even as I'm doing something like this drawing right here, I am in a sense thinking that there's a skull underneath here. You know, there's the bridge of the nose. I'm thinking where that eye may go. I'm thinking that nose is going to come down. I'm thinking that there's muscles all in the face happening through here. You know, how would this actually work and come together? So all that really is happening inside my head um, as I'm doing this. So that's just something that I would um, say. But it is all underneath there. You know, especially my first drawings in my unconscious doodles. That's sort of like what it becomes, all right? So again, we're just doing, I'm just messing around here, doing unconscious doodling. Let me see. Um, I feel like some people really try too much on former and don't realize it's just a, a way to better plan scenes. Um, I'm not sure that I understand that question. Uh, maybe you're saying, I feel like some people rely too much on the form and don't realize it's just better just to get the energy out, which would, which was, I would say. Um, love hearing from you, Stephen, for the past few days, Monday morning, art talk, your chat with Bobby, um, and you, re you read on Warrior, all great. Thanks for being around at this time of isolation. You bet, Brandon. I'm glad to kind of like be here, um, and I'm going to just kind of keep drawing, keep following me. If you guys aren't subscribed to me with my art talk, um, which is just on YouTube, go to Stephen Silver. I got, I don't know, 300 something now videos on just my, just talking. And that's what's important too, is just the talk. It's not all about just the drawing and getting advice on drawing. I want to um, really just uh, give insight into mindset because that's why this is gonna be important, especially during this time in isolation. This is the person who is going to be taking time during this time to invest in themselves? What are you doing to invest in yourself? What are you doing to work on, even if it's an hour a day, working on something that's going to better you in the future? All of a sudden, a year from now, uh, you're, you're going to be um, in a, such a better place when you set up at that convention. Because now, oh, now I, man, I worked on that stuff and my book is ready. This is done. That's done. I Now I can set up at Comic-Con if you can get in. But another convention, whatever it may be, these are things that you're going to eventually just be able to um, do and, and kind of like get into, right? So, uh, but prepare yourself now. Do not wait. This is... This is the test of a true procrastinator. If you're procrastinating during this time, if you're not working on what you need to work on right now, then I'm sorry to say you're a forever procrastinator and you need help and you need to change your ways because this is your time just to, we are where we are. This is the situation we're in. We're nowhere else. This is it. 
don't stop the worrying and just go do you you know do what you can you know what you're capable of doing you know what you can do at this time is there something you need phone calls you need to make make them is there things you need uh uh, cancel, cancel them. The things that you need to reorganize, reorganize. This is the time to do it. All right. Uh, let me see. Sorry for the typos. No worry. I was just saying some people don't pro progress beyond learning the basics of construction, but don't know how to develop really interesting cartoony characters. That's true. That's true. I would say that's absolutely right because people get into that um, frame of mind where I'm going to just get off that layer now, where they're getting into the frame of mind where they're slowing down so much. They've always been taught construction. Okay, I got to really slow down here. I got to just work on my construction and I got to make sure that that head goes into the neck and I got to make sure that that goes into the body and I got to make sure that my form is working, that arm is connecting here. And all of a sudden they got drawings that are just stiff and boring and lifeless. When the reality Reality is it comes down to story again in my book the silver way and in my schoolism class uh, story gesture design form and details all right story gesture design form details so what is the story the story is this guy is running because he just got bitten by a dog or a dog's about to bite his butt. Oh my God, I'm running. This guy's moving. Oh my God, that dog's going to attack me. I'm going to run. So we got this guy running. All right, so that becomes my story. And now my gesture is informed by my story. You can't have it the opposite way. You can't have a gesture before you know the story. It's just impossible. It just doesn't work that way. That's when, why we got to think about what the F, what is your character wanting? What is your character thinking? What is your character feeling? You put that into play. Now we've gone through those things. Now I can start designing and go, you know what, this guy, I want him just a little bit more heavy set. And maybe he's got a tank top on. Maybe he's wearing gloves. You know, maybe this guy was, um, you know, he has sort of like real long hair, you know, or something that, that's flying through there. All right. Maybe this guy is, uh, he was wearing shorts. Again, this is where I'm thinking about the design. Maybe he's got socks on. Now I'm starting to think about his shoes and everything else through there. Right. So this is what I'm just starting to play with is that whole idea where I'm just thinking about the design. It could be I'm thinking about my tangents. I'm thinking about balance. I'm th well, not really at this point, the tangents, but I'm thinking of clarity. I'm thinking about balance. I'm thinking about all the design principles that are very important um, within design. And now from here, I can start to think about the form. If I want to start thinking about the construction, well, then from there, I know that my body has this construction through here and it is something like that and I know I have this head which is connected and that neck is behind there somewhere and I know I got my arm and I got my elbow and I got my forearm and then I'm going to have my um, hand through here all right so but this one I'm just this is where the construction just starts to come in all right you know you don't have to slow down to this point I'm just saying it for teaching purposes this is what I'm starting just to think about. Again, I'm not tracing because I want to just make sure that all my forms are working now. So then from there, now I'm going through my form and then I can start getting into my details. My details could be my cleanup line. My details can be just a little bit more um, of some of these things that I just want to, you know, elaborate on, you know, through here, the placement. I'm thinking about my tangents at this point. I'm thinking about spacing. I'm thinking about just all these different things are going in my mind right now after the fact. Oh shoot, there's a bunch of things here. Uh, let me uh, go back and just look at some of these questions as we're having just a little chat here and discussion. Uh, love your energy, Stephen. Glad you see doing good. I have a question. When you get frustrated, creativity, what are some of uh, things you do to get back in the groove? Exactly what I'm doing now is this idea of unconscious doodling. Just just drawing anything, just not giving yourself an actual thing to draw. Just move your hand around because it turns into something else. Tried my first caricature today. It needs work. I'm going to finish your class on schoolism here in the next couple of weeks. Awesome. Um, let me see. Hello, I'm listening from Ireland. Hello, I have a Guinness. I just bought a six pack of Guinness last night. It's not as good as the fresh Guinness you get when you're in Ireland. 
Um, but uh, cheers, man. Have a Guinness for me, please. Uh, let me see here. In two in the morning, I love John Burt. Some trouble turning people into the characters. Exactly. This is what I tried telling a friend of mine. She does really solid drawing, but the proportions are too even. If you guys do have a question, maybe just write question or something in front, just because I don't want to read maybe necessarily. I'll read everyone's comments later, but I don't just want to take up the, the time on the feed. Um, let me see. Uh, I always say not drawing. You're making a character. That's right. Production. So saying it's time people can focus too. Uh, but when everything is too stiff, too lifeless. Okay, I'm not sure what's going on there. All right, so anyway, we're just drawing. So again, what we're guys doing here, we're just doing unconscious doodling. I'm taking questions, just trying to help you through anything, just to relax and have fun. And this is why the unconscious doodling is so much fun because sometimes, you know, I again, it's and that's what all I want to focus on here. Like I could draw something like this, and again, I don't know what it is just yet, but say I do something like this. I've just drawn those three factors. I've drawn number one, I've drawn number two, the body, and I've drawn number three, the legs. So when I'm drawing a lot of times, I'm breaking my characters into three different shapes. That's what I'm sort of working on. Now, the fun thing about this is this could be anything. This could be the front view of someone, the back view of someone. I don't know what you guys even see in this, but all of a sudden I could do this. I'm just gonna do another layer. Oops. What I could do in my unconscious student, all of a sudden, what if I just do something like this, and I bet you guys didn't see this one coming. What if this was a back view of someone? And that guy's sort of just like asking a you know, question or something. We got a back view of someone, and uh, we got that, and all of a sudden, this guy's just wearing shorts, and there's just his shoulder blades through here, let's throw that hat out, and he just kind of wants to just go, I don't know, I thought it was just kind of over in that way, that's a horrible hand, but hey, who's 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 counting, who's who's who's, who's concerned about that? Um, anyway, it's doing that, and then we got the back of the leg coming through here, through there, and then I got the back of the leg coming through here, could turn his foot that way, I could turn his foot out that way just a little bit more, but then I go, no, I don't want that. What if all of a sudden, this person is just now looking like this, and they're sort of, what are they wanting? What are they thinking? What are they feeling? Maybe this guy is just um, doing what I'm doing right now. I'm just like, I don't know. I, I, I just don't know what it is that I'm even just trying to say or do right now, but um, I don't know. Your guess is as good as mine, you know, so is doing something like that and that person's looking down and their mouth's open and doing something like this and maybe this guy's shirtless and we got his big belly and maybe this guy's just wearing some underwear through there. Looks like my dad. Just like wearing this bald guy, just big belly, just sort of like, all of a sudden now my dad goes into my head. I'm like, oh, I'm going to draw my dad. <laughs> my dad would always walk around in his underwear in the house. It's like from the uh, Goldbergs, if you guys have ever seen that show. That was my dad. Uh, you know, something through there. So then you got something like that, right? So that was based on what I'm just drawing through there. So look what I've done. I did that one from that. I did that from there. Let's go on and see if there's uh, something more we could do. What if, uh, let's see, let's make it a, uh, let's make it, yeah, I don't know, a female here. Let's get some hair going through here. And maybe she's looking over there and her head sort of like tilted back. And uh, let's see what this sort of like turns into. Maybe we could add some breasts through here. She's wearing a shirt. Maybe she's pregnant. <laughs> and now she's holding a baby. Oh, my baby, my baby. My baby's coming soon. Now she's holding a baby through there. And she's just uh, wearing some pants through here. <laughs> Maybe, maybe she's wearing some high heels. Why would you wear high heels when you're pregnant, woman? What's the matter with you? All right, so she's wearing some high heels. All right, so now, <laughs> now we got that. We got a whole different thing going on here. Let's see some questions. Hello, I'm listening to you from Ireland, and it is one in the morning. I love drawing, but I'm having trouble turning. Oh, I saw that one. Um, let me see. Question. Um, I have done a convention for the first time last year, and I felt like the sales 
was more important than making connections and just enjoying my tabling session. Any advice for someone new? Um, no, the most important thing is just to absolutely get out there. Uh, and again, you are going to be concerned about sales, especially if you're paying for the table. Um, this is why you want to go to conventions and just meet people. You don't always want to set up at conventions, of course. You want to go out there. You want to meet people. And that's why I balance it. There is a great show called the Licensing Expo. There's one in New York. There's one in Las Vegas. There's one in Europe. You go there and you just walk around and look what people are doing. I would highly advise that. That's how you start to meet people. Um, how long did it take you to get super comfortable drawing digitally versus on paper? Uh, not that long. We kind of had to do it. I was working on Danny Phantom at the time at Nickelodeon many, many moons ago, over 12 years ago, right? Um, 15 years ago, somehow. How many years has it been? And uh, from there, they started bringing in the Cintiqs <coughs> and they were asking us to all draw on that. So it happened really quick, but I, I love it. Um, and I love this program. I love uh, Sketchbook. It's one of my favorite programs because I'm a drawer. I'm a, I'm a doodler. I'm not a painter. Don't ever come to me looking for painting advice. You're not going to get it. Not, not to where you get a guy like Bobby and Nathan and um, everyone else on schoolism. Uh, you know, go to those guys. There's so many, so much talent in, in that pool, but this is what I'm, I'm doing. All right, so yeah, we're just drawing and I just want to show you guys, anyone coming in late just now, I just kind of want to show you how I just draw, again, just building up shapes. You don't know what they're going to necessarily be. Where'd everything go? Hold on here. I got to get those all turned off. Oops. Where'd it go? There. I just started with that shape, but all of a sudden it went, it could become that character. It could be that character. It could be that character. Um, because there's movement and that's where the sort of unconscious doodling really comes in so let me just turn off all of that right now and let's just see what else we can do i'm just going to start drawing i'm going to start drawing uh heads here let me see um hey i'm trying to rebuild my drawing skills i'm mainly focusing on human anatomy is there anyone i should study for this for um human anatomy andrew loomis and george bridgman you can't go wrong with those guys frank fazetta uh, really great stuff. Um, one of my favorite books, geez, of all time, is this book right here. How to, how to Draw the Marvel Way. So good. So good. So, so get that. I got another great book in front of me here. Alex Toth. Really awesome guy who did so many characters. Uh, really amazing work through there. So I would uh, look at stuff like that. For sure, um, Stan Proko, Proko, I would look at Proko, uh, just amazing YouTube channel. All right, let me see here, uh, Sketchbook Pro is also free from Autodesk, yeah, I freaking love it. Um, sketch real life, probably just draw tons of cartoons, don't think too much about it, be consistent, everyday question. Uh, love your unique shapes, but... Uh, does one, does one turn the head shapes you just created as an example? Okay, I love your unique shapes, but... Oh, maybe how does one turn the head shapes just like you did? Good to see you. Well, here, I want to tell you guys something. So, I created, along with a friend of mine, a thing called Posebook 3D. And there's a bunch of free stuff on there, and you can buy other ones. And when you do, it kind of goes... Um, to, you know, it's very inexpensive for you to uh, buy and the artists that have contributed when there's enough people that are doing it, they're, they're, um, they, they get payment too. So it's something that I'm just sending uh, to those guys. I think that it's, you know, important. Just I want to make sure that there's enough people buying, you know, buy through that, buying it. They, they get um, they get money from that too. So it's a really great thing. But the Postbook 3D is will give you a lot of different angles. And that's the thing that you got to think about. So when you're drawing... You're building up any sort of construction on your head, and I can just rotate this head. If I'm drawing this head, whatever it may be, I could just draw multiple different, you know, angles through here. And what it's going to teach you is the importance of really just finding a center line through your design, finding out where your eye line, but most importantly, just really just drawing through your shapes. And that's what I'm doing when I'm doing stuff like this. I'm just drawing all the way through my shapes, and I just want to try to establish 
the direction of the form first. So I'm drawing through. I know that's going in this way. Your nose typically will always follow your eyes, right? Your mouth can get real stretched and warped and that can change direction, but your chin and your jaw, that'll change too. But a good rule of thumb is just to make sure that they're all kind of going in the same sort of direction. So if I'm turning ahead like this, and then I got my nose going that way, so I'm moving it, I know that my mouth is gonna be up here, going that way, and then I know my chin is kinda going that way. Same thing here, if I got my eyes spinning down there, that's following that way, I got my nose going in the same direction as my eyes, I got my mouth going in that direction, then I got my chin going in that direction. So now, whatever I do, as I start to build my character, I can just start to move them, you know, move that character in those different directions. Say so, yeah, that guy has a nose that looks like that, and it's that sort of like U shape. And see how I'm just sort of like moving all those things. I'm still just moving all these parts around and then just doing things like this. Maybe this guy might be, you know, really smiling. Maybe this one is, you know, sort of frowning. Maybe this one, his, his mouth is you know, open and, and doing something. But that's something that I got to make sure that I'm being consistent on. And just in the shapes in themselves, it, it doesn't really matter. You can draw any shape. You know, if I just draw a shape like this, look what happens if I just, I'm going to draw this guy's eyes. Say I just got this guy's eyes through here. And just even what can happen with the nose. Say I'm going to draw that guy's mouth way down here. All right, look what can happen just by me adding a different sort of nose. What if I give this guy a nose that looks like that? Look what that sort of character, uh, oop, hold on here. Well, you know, that's his nose there. What if I draw the guy's nose and it looks like this? You know, how does that sort of change the guy's character? What if I do give this guy just a broken nose and do something like that? How does that change his character? What if I give him just a little upturned nose like that? How does that change his character? And doing all these things are just going to help you in just changing your character and creating any sort of character off this shape. It can be anything. I could take this shape of just even this. And now I've taken that and now let me just add something else here. Maybe I'm going to do something like this. And now this guy's sort of like sitting. <laughs> Maybe his pants are hanging down. This guy's bending over and is showing some arse crack through there. And maybe his, this guy's just a, a trucker or something and is eating a sandwich. You know, and then we got a sandwich through there. <laughs> I don't know. This is the fun. Why not, man? This is the fun of drawing. You just end up doing whatever you end up doing. See what it turns into. All right. Hey, Rick, how you doing? Man, it's so been such a long time. Um, let me see. Question. Let me see here. Oh, my God. So many people recommend how to draw comics in Marvel way. I've seen it on so many animators book lists. But, Sean, have you bought that book? Have you gone out and got it? That's another thing. And, of course... Well, I'm saying that I'm going to throw in. You got to get the silver way. Don't forget that one. Um, but no, get the books. When people recommend books, do it. That's the difference. That's the difference that makes people and breaks people. Because people say, hey, get that book. Get Andrew Loomis. Get Bridgman. Yeah, sounds like a good recommendation. And then they don't get it. So just follow through. All right. Um, Hi, Mr. Silver. I'm trying to develop a style that's faster for me to draw and animate. Any tips? Yes. The biggest tips that I have in regards to if you want to animate is, first of all, I'm going to make another book recommendation. And I don't have it uh, up here anywhere that I can see. But um, Seamus Carl Hain was a, an animator from Disney. Look him up. He wrote a book. And what he talked about was when animating is stop erasing is you just got to draw. You just got to move that hand. He ended up doing more scenes than anyone because he didn't he didn't break the his concentration. So what happens with a lot of people are they're, they're drawing and they're doing something like this and they're drawing too slow and they want to animate and they're trying to draw this character doing so. Oh, no, no. Undo, undo, undo. And okay, wait. What, what if I have the arm? Um, oh, no. Undo, undo. Let me do this. No, undo, undo. And they keep doing that. Undoing. So what you're doing, you keep getting to the traffic light where you, you just keep stopping all the time. So what you have to do is just let your mind wander, just just think things through, just move that that hand around, um, and th and that's how you just w would say you're animating. It's just like you know I want to draw someone pulling something. Okay, let me just I want to try to find that energy. This guy's 
pulling and I'm thinking about the tension through here. This guy's pulling something. Ugh, you know, what's this guy doing? Maybe that leg's going back through there. Maybe that leg's going through there. Oh man, maybe that didn't work out. Let me just try to, you know, find this other one. What if um, his back is just arched just a little bit more through there and his head's being pulled forward and I'm feeling that tension and 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 then what if what if uh he's being he's pulling so hard that he can have both his legs going like this and, and is moving forward and that's what you want to think about when you're drawing you got to get into it you got to feel it you got to express it and they stay loose and that's going to be the most important thing all right uh, when designing a character, how do you know what colors are right for its design? Uh, d don't worry about the colors for the design, worrying about what they're going to be um, at the beginning. Focus more on the drawing and the character itself, but you can implement color to maybe say this person is dark. You know, think about when you think about someone who's a goth person, right? And they just love that sort of music or heavy metal or something else. You know, look, you research, reference, oh my, they're wearing all this dark stuff and that's going to help you. You look at people who wear lighter colors and brighter yellows and greens. These are things that can maybe represent a little bit more happy and joyful. But something I use for my color palette, this is my secret. This is a secret. It's actually, um, I talked about it in my book. Um, but the secret is my color palettes, a lot of times, I use tropical fish. Because the color palettes, nature's designed the fish already. They've designed the color palettes. And it's a great way just to create a bunch of colors that work together. So that's just a little secret there. All right. Um, I just got rejected from Sheridan Animation. Ah, screw those guys. Uh, when I was showing my teachers my portfolio, they only had nice things to say. Who can, who can I go to for honest advice um, if my instructors can't help? Um, you know, it's actually, I'm, I'm, you can come to me. I do a mentorship program and actually I help, um, I've helped a couple students get into Sheridan and I, you know, and the schools they want to get into through a mentorship that I do. So if you go to silvertoons.com and you go to up in the top, you'll see all the different things I offer. I do 30 minute mentorships for people, very inexpensive, very cheap. And we meet face to face for 30 minutes and I'll go over it with you and tell you what's working and what's not working. And again, I've helped people get in. So I'm very proud of that. And that's why I'm saying it, not to boast, not to brag, but I've helped people get into where they need to get into. I've helped people get into studios by looking over their tests, just to not changing them, but giving them advice in order to make it stronger. So I've helped people with that. So absolutely, if you want to, just reach out, go to my site, silvertunes.com. I meet every Tuesday. So if you want to set up an appointment on a Tuesday, feel free to do so. Um, let me see. Oh, how to draw comics the Marvel way when I was 15. Uh, let me see. My first book was how to draw manga. Nice animation from script to screen. That's that's the one. Animation from script to screen by Seamus Culhane. Yep, that's the one. So it's a great, great book. He talks about... Uh, it's a great book. Read it. Um, okay, thanks. Hey, Stephen. A little late today, but here anyway. Hey, Horatio. How you doing? I've just been chatting. We're just doing a little nighttime in my, you know, rainy day chat. And I've just, you can go back. This video hopefully is going to be still up there. And uh, you can watch everything that we sort of discussed. But I'm just taking questions. And I'm just doing random unconscious doodling. That's all I'm doing. And just how I just build up and I'm just, there's no, I'm not even thinking. This is how I can relax when I draw. People go, how can I relax? I'm always so stressed and so tight. It's just like, have fun, move around, see what happens. So through here, I'm just going to draw just a bunch of different shapes because I don't know what's going to happen yet, but I do know they're going to be just a bunch of people, but it leads to different ideas. And that's, that's what I love. I didn't know I was going to give that guy that big uh, lip through there doing something like this. All right, and then now, I don't know, I'm going to do more of a triangle, sort of like shaped eye through there. We've got his eyebrow. Maybe we can give him some thick, bushy eyebrows. Maybe I'm going to pull an eyeball out of the side of his head through there. Who is this guy? We don't know. Who is this guy? Where does he live? Where is he from? Again, I don't always know. Maybe he's got, a, I'm going to put him with a baseball cap going backwards, and then I'm going to, Give him a nose that's just going to pop out of there. Why not? Give him some nostrils through here. Question, how do you bring more emotions into your heart? 
Number one, you got to make sure that you're always looking at people. You got to observe people all the time because then when you when and that's even when you're watching TV and you start to see people's mannerisms and you start to see that and that's how you do it. And one other thing that I do and so that's the observation plays such a big role in everything just making sure that you're observing as much as possible all the time. That's going to be you know, a very, oops, no, don't go away. That's going to be a, a very important thing. But in general, just in observation, to get more emotions into a character, and I'll show you right now, what I do is I always, again, those of you guys have read my book, who, who follow, who take my courses on schoolism, have heard all this, is avoiding the ladder in my design. So I want to avoid this. All right, I'm avoiding the ladder through there and through here, the next thing that I'm doing, I'm just thinking about playing around with angles. The more angles you get, the more movement and life you can get in a drawing. So if I'm gonna draw a character, just by me playing with these different angles can start to create just more of a feeling of emotion. Of course, I'm thinking about the construction, the muscles under the face. Again, that's where the knowledge has to come in in something like this. You gotta be aware of how things just kind of connect that, you know, this is where that education comes in and sort of just teaching yourself. Again, I don't, I don't know, I didn't know what this guy was gonna look like, but all of a sudden I'm realizing, what if this guy just has a really flat head through there? Have, you know, why not? What if I just make his whole head just sort of square like that and now I can come in and just start to build upon this. What if I'm gonna make his, uh, again, I'm playing even with angles and contrast and angles um, in my design, just seeing what's gonna happen uh, with that. Again, that, that breeds a little bit more life into the design through here. Is there anything anyone wants me to draw, but not any character that I've designed, you know, for TV shows, I don't wanna do that. <laughs> <laughs> but if there's anything, you know, you say, hey, draw this guy doing this, or I don't know. We're just we're having just a little uh, drawing chat, just hanging out here. I'm taking questions. I'm giving advice. I'm just, we're just chatting here. This is going to be up on my, if you guys follow me, you guys probably follow me or watching this because you uh, probably watch my art talks and that's why you're here. So I don't need to tell you to go to my channel, uh, but that's where it'll be. Let's see if there's any questions here. Um, hi, Stephen. Uh, how thorough is your portfolio? Oh, Stephen, how do you bring emotions to you? Okay, Stephen, how thorough is your portfolio review on Wizio? Wizio. So yeah, Wizio is, I'm only on, on that is, I'm gonna look through your portfolio and then I'm just gonna give you all the advice that I can based on what I see. So I would say it's pretty thorough. So you have the option of doing that. I'm gonna tell you what I feel you should, you gotta let me know what it is you wanna do, um, like what, what area of the industry you wanna get in and I'll go through it and um, expressing that. I'm not, I'm, I'm not able to pull up the screen and go piece by piece on that. But when you do my mentorship, if you want to do that, then I can go over stuff with you. The thing that sometimes happens with that, we end up talking a little bit longer and not everything gets, um, say, not every design is going to be, of course, talked about. But, you know, I'd, I'd say it's pretty thorough. So you could go either way, whichever you're more comfortable with. Uh, let me see. I'm going to go back to, this is on a delay a bit. So my apologies. I'm going back. Um, do you have any tips on staying loose while still maintaining details and personality? Um, Anne Marie, I kind of already covered that already. So just please, um, if you can, you'll be able to still watch this, uh, show, uh, what I'm doing, the show, it's a show. Uh, I give back to you question, looking at the world at the moment, do you think online learning will take a stronger precedent compared to physical art schools? Absolutely. I think online learning is going to be the new norm. People are going to realize where they thought, wow, I never wanted to do that. And I, they kept putting it off and they're going to start to realize, you know what, oh, this isn't so bad. And also the studios are going to realize we don't have to have all the artists in-house. We can have more freelance artists. I just got a notice the other day from Bento Box that they're looking for freelance artists right now. I'm telling you, it's going to be a good thing is going to come out of this for freelancers worldwide because there used to be that stigma of, no, you got to be in-house because they didn't think people were going to get stuff turned in. I've been working from home turning stuff in for the last 12, 13 years. 
But a lot of producers get nervous. But once they realize, you know what? This production is still going and you know what? It's working just as smoothly. Let's do this more. And it's going to be a change. You'll see. Uh, let me see. Great book. I read, read it all the time. Hello, Stephen. Hello, hello. I was looking at a video of people playing pranks for pose reference earlier on YouTube. It was a bit weird for me, but I made some good drawings. That's good. That's good. Um, how about an animal character? All right, we can do that. Let me see. Uh, Self-portrait. <laughs> That's too easy. <laughs> uh, from uh, See, uh, no characters. I'm not drawing any characters from any shows. Not happening. Um, a squirrel drawing a person. What about sketching characters in perspective, trying to set camera like in storyboards? Um, that's an interesting one too. All right, let, uh, how about an animal? I don't know. So a squirrel... I don't have any reference in front of me, but I'm going to just start thinking. So when I'm, I'm picturing, this is what I'm doing right now. I'm trying to challenge, and I'm breathing, and I'm putting a squirrel, trying to recall what a squirrel looks like. Okay, so when I think about a squirrel, I think about that they do have more of a triangular face, and I know they have these little ears through there. All right, is it a fat squirrel, a skinny squirrel? Let's make this guy a fat squirrel. I'm going to make his face even bigger. Let's give them a big old fat body. And then they got the big old bushy tails and the tails go inwards or outwards. Okay, they go outwards and it curls. See, I'm thinking in my mind, I'm thinking about the squirrel, the squirrel, the squirrel. What does a squirrel look like? And I know they got those big legs and they got some big feet through here. Again, I'm just blocking in my shapes. Through there. All right, and this squirrel, well, this squirrel, he happens to like eating pizza. And he's got little hands, you know, they got like those little arms and he's got some pepperonis through there. And his nose, the squirrel's nose, they're not really big. I mean, we can make all different sizes, but maybe more of a triangular shape through there. And this is the beauty, and I will say, of designing stuff before you actually look at an animal or you look at that species. It's good to understand what something looks like, and I absolutely encourage people to do that, but this is another exercise, is draw the animal without even looking at the reference, and why you do that sometimes is because it breathes new ideas. When you throw that reference in front of you, then you get locked down, you go, oh my God, a gorilla looks like this, an alligator looks like this, a squirrel looks like this. So by me not really knowing what that squirrel looks like, maybe the squirrel's wearing glasses, maybe it's a blind squirrel. Maybe the squirrels, I don't know. <laughs> that, that's my little squirrel. That's my little squirrel through there. All right. So that's a, that's on a, that's a little squirrel. I got to move off of the space. Sometimes I look at a joint and go, ah. Okay. Drawing things in perspective. Yeah. I mean, you're setting up shots with perspective again. It's knowing the camera again. Are you the little worm? up here so all of a sudden you just got to start all you're doing when you're thinking about perspective is just piling things on top of each other so i could have a thing like this right there i could have something that's going like that through there and i could have a, a box that's going something like that and maybe there ends up being feet and all of a sudden we end up drawing the top of someone's head you know through here right so all of a sudden now you start to we can start to like put that together i'm thinking because the camera's up there or maybe i got um a more of that uh, little bird that worms eye view where again i'm just piling things on top of each other but really i'm drawing through all my shapes i kind of got to know what those shapes are, are kind of you know looking like maybe that thing's gonna just stomp right on that you know that little worm that poor little worm that was there Okay, so that's where, you know, that's all I'm just trying to do. I just, and, and more importantly, when you're drawing any sort of perspective or anything that you're trying to do, that's where you just start drawing it really rough because all of a sudden I'm just going to start to, you know, draw something out like this and I'm making something just really, you know, rough through here and I'm getting just people, maybe they're going up an escalator or something through there. You know, so that's why I'm drawing rough. And, and then you come back and you go into your story, gesture, design, form, details. And those are the things you just kind of want to uh, work on. All right, let me see. Uh, I'm going to catch up here on just some uh, questions. 
Um, I love animating. I want to do it, but being in California, I'm afraid there aren't many jobs out there for animating. Should I try to find interest in something similar like storyboard? Absolutely. B, if you love animating, do storyboards if you can't get those gigs because, and depends what sort of animating, like you get a great studio like Titmouse, they have a lot of artists in house and they're all animating in house. And those guys are going to be doing lots of work soon. They got to deal with Netflix and they're an awesome studio, uh, but do storyboards. Yeah. You start doing storyboards cause then you get that itch of moving characters around uh, CGMA actually has a lot more stuff and interest in in than my own local college. I live in the Midwest, so online schooling may take more precedent in the future. It absolutely will. How about an animated show starring Dr. Pimple Popper, a.k.a. Sandra E., who goes around helping characters with bad character design? <laughs> Is that something to draw? Is that what we're doing? Is that something real? I don't know. Uh, hold on here. Uh, the latter example is fantastic. Um... Ba, 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 ba. Um, it applies to posing 3D characters as well. Thanks, Stephen. You bet. Great squirrel. Does work become more difficult during allergy season? No, you just got to cover your mouth and sneeze into your arm while you're drawing. All right, we're going to draw Dr. Pimple Popper. What would Dr. Pimple Popper look like? Dr. Pimple Popper. Okay. I imagine Dr. Pimple Popper himself is a big, giant pimple maybe um and and maybe dr giant pimple popper was a uh he used to have pimples himself his whole life and that's why he became a pimple and now the pimple popper decided that he's he's tired of being a pimple popper he's he's, he's so he's so upset about all his pimples that he's going to um start helping people uh, with their own pimples. And maybe he's got a little bit of a mustache. And uh, maybe he has a, you know, a nice little nose there. And he's got some big eyes. And why does Dr. Pimple Popper have some big eyes? Because Dr. Pimple Popper has to be able to see. You know, he needs to see the pimples. He needs to see the yellow uh, through there. Okay, so Dr. Pimple Popper, uh, he should probably be wearing a mask. Especially in this day and age. So... Maybe let's, uh, I, I don't want to cover up his face necessarily, but let's just say that he has maybe a little mask on him. Let's give him a little doctor's hat through there. Let's give him some bushy eyebrows through there. All right, Dr. Pimple Popper, Dr. Pimple Popper. Dr. Pimple Popper is, um, he's a jolly little fella. No, right here, what I'm using is the golden section coming into play. Again, I love my little golden section. And I have my own little calipers I make. If you guys are interested, you can get them on my site as well. But these calipers, and I like using the golden section a lot. But that's how I start breaking things up in my design is just really so I, once again, avoiding the ladder. So that's where I'm using the golden section if you guys are interested in that. Dr. Pimple Popper has... Um, He's got his, his little arms and he's got some little gloves because he's going to be squeezing pimples. And Dr. Pimple Popper always walks around like he's pinching. He always has his hands up ready to pinch because he's a pimple popper. And that's, that's what he's doing. So let's uh, maybe get his hand up like that. Again, I'm just sort of like, I don't know where I'm going with this. But let's uh, pull his finger out there just a little bit more. Dr. P my name is Dr. Pimper Popper. And I like to pop pimples. All right, so we got Dr. Pimple Popper going on here. And uh, let's, I don't know, let's give him some little boots. Dr. Pimple Popper, that's his little gown through there. His little feet. All right. And then he's got his scrubs and everything. Dr. Pimple Popper. I don't know. There he is, Dr. Pimple Popper. <laughs> uh, does work become more, uh, yeah, the Dr. Pimple Popper was the drawing idea. <laughs> That's Dr. Pimple Popper. What other character are we gonna draw? What other character, that, that was, oops, oh no.
That was Dr. Pimp. That's Dr. Pimple Popper. All right. That was just one idea. Well, let's actually, I'm going to erase that. I'm going to give him a surgical mask. What if he does have a surgical mask? And you've got to make sure it's wrapped around the face properly. And it's like an N95, right? I think that's what they call. All right, we've got his nice thick glasses. And we'll get his little thing through there. We'll give him some highlights in his eye. I'm going to make him cuter by adding another little dot there. No, I don't like that. All right, Dr. Pimper Popper. All right. Big rat or maybe an oyster character, a big rat. Okay, so now I got to put on my my mind hat. Trying to, I'm trying to think about a rat. And I'm not trying to think about anyone who's designed a rat, what another designer did of a rat. I'm just trying to think of a rat. Have, when was the last time I saw a rat? I saw a dead rat when I was walking my dog. I did see a dead rat. And he kind of looked like this. I looked at the rat. I looked at the dead rat. I'm just like, look at that rat. He was a big rat. And his arms and his legs were all sort of like curled in through here. They were like both. It was kind of weird. It's like, I mean, his, his body went into rigor mortis, right? Is that what it's called? Um, state. And his arm was just kind of all up like that. And she's like, hey. This is a feeling I'm getting. Again, this is the unconscious doodling. Hey. Thinking about, eh. Then his teeth. Oh, I'm dead. His head was sort of like tilted. I'm tilting it in that direction. His ears, drawn flat. His nose, poor little nose. Let's pull his arm out just a little bit more. That's where. Eh. I'm dead. Damn it. Oh, the poor little rat. There's his eyes, his clothes, his eyes are popping out the side of his head. He's got his little whiskers. Oh, bed, they killed me, something killed me. His tail. There's my little, there's my little dead rat, or my live rat. Let's draw a live rat. Let's make up a rat. Let's give him a big old triangle head. Let's give him some big ears. Maybe, what is this rat? Maybe this rat is just kind of sad. This rat, why is this rat sad? This rat is sad because the coronavirus is going on. And when all these people were out and about and they were dropping off food everywhere at the theme park, he could no longer, now there's no more food. So he's kind of just a little bit bummed. It's a little sad rat. And he's getting skinny because now there's no food. And his arms are just kind of dropped to the side. Just like sad little rat. Maybe he's sitting. He's bored. He's got nothing better to do. Little sad rat. Dang it. This sucks. I'm sad. Gonna make his eyes sad. Just kind of droopy. Damn it, there's no more food because all the humans are quarantined. Maybe I don't even need that other hand there. Give him just a little bit of a belly because he used to eat, but now it's just a sad rat. He can't eat anymore. And this is where ideas come from. <laughs> So this is what you do. This is what you do when you're unconscious doodling and just making things happen. All right. Yeah, the rat's sad because he doesn't have any toilet paper. Okay. Uh, just purchased your book. Look forward to going through it and the exercises. Well, thank you. Yeah, go through those exercises. That's, that's the big thing. All right. I know. What are we going to draw now? Let's go ahead and draw. Let's draw... Let's draw, let's see what it turns into. I'm just going to draw and you guys tell me what this guy is. All right, let's kind of get into this drawing. We're getting into this drawing. I'm going to draw this guy. I don't know what I'm drawing yet. I do know what I'm, I don't know what this, this is going to be, 
but I'm sort of drawing this right now. And this guy's got, uh, he's got maybe that coming out of his body. What is he doing? Just drawing this guy. Who is this guy? This guy's. What is this guy? How's this guy? How's this guy look? What does this guy look like? There's his hands through there. He's real big and full of all this stuff, and he's got just real crazy crooked teeth. He's very angry. What is this guy? What is this guy? This guy is. This guy is just a big toilet paper villain. This guy's the toilet paper villain and is hoarding all the toilet paper. You son of a bitch. What about all those people who want to take a poop and they can't anymore because you toilet paper roll man who has enough toilet paper, you've hoarded it all and it's just coming out of your butt through there. <laughs> <laughs> this is the again. This is just I don't know where this is going. This is stupid. Uh, this is this is the the the, the toilet paper and, and he's got a toilet paper bin. He's got like scales on him that look like toilet paper too. He's got toilet paper roll scales on there. Maybe he's got sort of like little mini toilet paper rolls for his ears, almost like little buns on his head through there. I don't know. That's a crazy drawing. Uh, Crouchy Turtle, a bouncer, a, a burger, a king, okay, all oh, right, you guys are uh, talking about this, uh, let me see, it's the coronavirus, all right, um, <laughs> uh, it's the Ch Charmin brand toilet paper, right, so what we can do is, like, we got the, um, little, the, you guys, a lot of people don't know this, but I was asked to design, uh, the, um, I can't remember which company it was for, but the Charmin Bears for when they went CG. So I designed the little Charmin. I did a bunch of drawings for them, and I know they had other people doing different stuff, but um, I did a bunch of those drawings, and all I know is a lot of the drawings I did look just like the ones they did. So uh, I can just assume that they used a lot of what I gave them. But that was the, the Charmin Bear. Let me see. Maybe the Charmin Bear character is sitting on the toilet himself. And is so happy, this Charmin Bear is reading the newspaper that says Charmin stocks And he's very happy because he gets to enjoy the fact that all these stocks and everything are up. And he's going to have a big old smile on his face. Yes, I am so happy. I am so happy that <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. This again, the, the, the feeling, the idea, and, and, and all I'm doing is, even when I'm drawing this, I'm even just thinking about the tilt of the head to add a little bit more interest. I just want to add tilts um, to things because I think that's where all the life kind of comes from. Now I'm starting to think about construction just a little bit more, you know, under there, thinking about that. But now we've got a little Charmin Bear is happy through here. It's 6.44 my time. I'm going to get dinner shortly. All right, so then we got our little Charmin bear <laughs> happy. I'm remembering the little red bear talking about how clean his butt is now. <laughs> uh, stocks up for Charmin, very nice. That's it, that's it. All right, any other questions you guys have? Again, I was just kind of like just unconscious doodling here, just having a little drawing chat. We're just having fun. 
sketching things. Draw some female characters. Okay. Describe the female to me. Describe her. I want to hear what, what kind of, who, who is this female? You want me to design a female character? Let's go. What is this key female character? Draw some female characters. Can you recommend any books of composition? Oh my gosh. I don't know the names, but there's a really great composition book. If anyone can recommend it. Oh, it's an old book that I was so great. Um, I mean, there's a bunch really that I think might be out there. I'm just looking at my bookshelf to see if I have it here, but I don't. I'm sorry. Best thing that I would recommend too is find those awesome artists that you love who, who do comics and different things like that and start to study their compositions. Look at good directors, good movie shots and put it on pause and draw the composition and study from those little thumbnails. That's all you got to do. Draw Mother Teresa versus a Care Bear. <laughs> uh, let me see here. Do you animate? I don't animate. She's an old witch giving out cookies. How do you feel your visual library? She lives by the sea. An old witch. She's draw Mother Teresa. But okay, well, maybe Mother Teresa. Maybe she's an old witch. Female shopper. Frame length. That's a great book. Um, Dream Worlds, that's a good book. Skinny Vixen Villain. Skinny Vixen, okay, and a witch, and Mother Teresa. Uh, okay. Skinny Vixen Villain. I kind of like that. We can, maybe Mother Teresa has become the Skinny Vixen Villain. All right, so what I'm going to draw is just play around with shapes here. All right, with the, with the female shape, I'm just thinking about how I can, I go in, if you guys have read my book, The Silver Way of Following Me on Schoolism and Go to My Classes, I talk about the exclamation point as a great way just to start building characters. So that's what I'm doing here. I'm using the exclamation point through here and the teardrop shape. I'm going to get that shape in there. All right, I'm just going to put some weight. This becomes a weight-bearing leg up here. Her leg's going in that direction. Maybe she's got some real high boots. Maybe she's big breasted. I'm turning the body too. That's another thing that I do. I have my body turned that way, going in that direction. And then I have that going that way. And then I can just uh, even just turn my head just a little bit more side profile. So let's uh, get a little bit of a Mother Teresa look. <laughs> Maybe she's a nun. This is going to be wrong in many ways. She's got a big nose, maybe, you know, like Mother Teresa had, but we're going to get her just to maybe feel just a little bit younger, a little bit more sexier. Because sexy women can have small noses, big noses, wide noses. We don't need to go for the little upturned nose all the time for sexy women. That's all, I don't like that anymore. I, don't like, I haven't liked it for a long time. I did it on Kim Possible and stuff like that, but, you know, I mean... Let's see, maybe we're gonna get her chin just a little bit smaller. Gonna, we can, her lips. It's, you know what she's almost like reminding me of? I'm watching Hunters. <laughs> and uh, there's, there's that. Again, I don't wanna get all the details in there. That's like a little Mother Teresa hat. Maybe she's got a little uh, collar, you know, through there. Uh, let me see, she's a villain, maybe she's She's showing her might with her fist that she's got these sort of like powers. Again, I just want to drop in a quick little sketch. I'm not trying to work out my hand right now. I don't want to. I don't want to work out my hand. Don't make me work out my hand right now. I really don't want to work out my hand right now. All right, maybe she's got some gloves and she's like got a Shigo thing going on where she's got like, you know, powers in her, in her glove. Could be red instead of green. Do there, looking at some questions. Uh, my first gig at freelance character design and your book saved me. That's right on, I love that. At the door, that's what I want to hear. That's what the book's for. All right, let me see. Uh, oh, Scott Robinson is another great one. All right, so here we're drawing our, our vixen. Maybe she's got a hand on her side, but in here she's sort of like holding some sort of whip or something. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know yet. This is when you draw, 
You don't have to have all the answers. Don't worry about that. From there, I'm coming through. Let's give her a, uh, let's make, uh, let's get too sexy. Let's make, give her just a short dress through here. We got her high boots. Maybe she's got some little, you know, some of that going on. Little lingerie things. You know, what is that thing? The thing that straps up to them through there. Maybe she's got a short shirt through there and she likes to expose her belly just a bit so we can see her belly. Ooh, maybe she's got like she's Austin Powers and stuff and she's got like guns or cannons that come out of her breast through there. Maybe those can be weapons. And then maybe she's got some sort of device on her arm through here, which I don't know, shoots out, maybe can turn into some big, <laughs> some, some big rocket launcher of some sort. You know, it's just got some sort of gadget that's coming out of, you know, her through here. <laughs> and she's got some, she's like Inspector Gadget. She's like Inspector Gadget through here. And this is when, this is how you have fun with drawing, guys. When you just start making stuff up and you just, in your mind, you just start creating stuff. Again, this was based on like a vixen villain, Mother Teresa, which was uh, mentioned. Um, maybe she has cookies on her, um, on her thing just to th make the kids think that she chocolate chip cookies to make the kids think that she's friendly and she's going to help them out somehow. All right. Again, we got her sort of like fist coming up this way. She's wearing gloves. Just going to block in that fist. We got that. She's, uh, maybe... She's got some cheekbones going through there. It's more of a side view happening. Again, she's got the mother, a little bit of the Mother Teresa thing going on, the nun aspect. Again, I don't know what a hat looks like for the nun, but that's where you just draw it, and then I'm going to find the reference afterwards because this is where that creative, you know, phase comes from. Uh, let me see. What else? So we got that going on. She's got her boots. Let's get those boots in there. Big old boots that go all the way up through there. All right. So this was all based on her request. She's a cyberpunk nun. That's right. That's right. That's This is where the character designs start coming from. All right. And then she's got all the little powers and the, the things she can do stuff with that. All right. Mm, I don't know. That's where she is. She's got all these little gadgets. Uh, let's draw... Let's draw another female because we're getting just requests for females. Again, let's make this woman just, uh, we could make her just a little bit more voluptuous because there's nothing wrong with that. We like that. I'm just sort of like drawing the shape. I'm almost thinking about my line of action through there. Um, what is this woman even sort of like doing? What is this woman doing? Based on that, what I've just drawn right now, who is this woman and what is she doing? So I'm going to wait for the answers. This is a little bit slow. It's just on delay, but I want to see what the, what the next woman is here. Also, if you could change anything about the animation industry, what would it be? I'm very excited to enter the field and change things for the better. Um, changing the animation industry, I just think the important thing is just getting our rates up, everyone being on the same board where the industry is like people aren't doing multiple jobs, where they're being asked to do character design and props, all the storyboard artists are having to do editing and everything else. I think the change should come where artists understand their role. So what we need to build as a union, I'm a part of the, on the board, is we need to have just uh, classifications, even if the studios don't follow them, that all the artists are aware so that they can say, well, the position is for this, so they become more informed. Policewoman, I like that, art teaching. Looking through a telescope. Mm, I wanna maybe just show a little bit more of her face. I like the policewoman. Um, maybe, maybe this policewoman is, she's gonna give this woman a ticket because She's, uh, you know, she does, she's not going to let her do that. So now this woman, 
I'm going to put the prop inside because I want clarity. I want, um, it's just a design thing where I'm just thinking. I don't want it to create any sort of tangent or get lost. So what I'm doing is just creating my object in a place where it feels balanced to design through there. Um, and then we got her hand coming. Uh, let me see. The, the hand is sort of like holding the pad through here. Let me see. Sometimes I'll draw the hand first too before I even draw my arm and everything. So she's holding that and maybe she's she's holding the, she's writing. So she's got the pencil through here. And then I can get that and I'm just tilting her up a bit through there. So now she's going in that direction. All right, she's a policewoman and she's writing this ticket. Um, and she's not happy with this woman. I'm gonna put just a little bit of a tilt on her head. Or maybe she's sort of like rolling her eyes. Oh, brother. She's one of those kind of villains. And maybe because I'm thinking almost like a, an English policewoman kind of, but um, maybe her hair is in a bun. Because, you know, we gotta don't want it to interfere with our face, necessarily. So she's got a hair bun through there. Maybe she's got a little uniform, a little tie, and she's wearing a sweater through there. Uh, her sweater's maybe going to come down through here. Maybe she's wearing a skirt. And she's got some little patches here. And uh, then she's wearing maybe stockings and maybe a little bit of high heels or something through there. I don't know. Well, why, she shouldn't be wearing high heels because what if she's got to chase the person? I don't want to have to run. <laughs> this is what I'm thinking about when I'm designing characters. I'm, I'm, I'm thinking about these things. You got to think about these things. That's where your characters just start to come to life just uh, a little bit more, you know, through there. So she's got her little shoes on. But wait, she doesn't have a gun. She is an English policeman, but that's not cool. I'm going to give her a gun. She's got to have a belt and a gun, and she's going to have a bunch of stuff. I'm going to give her a big old bazooka. She's going to have a big old bazooka back there to tackle anyone if they need to be tackled because she's going to shoot the people that need to be shot and she's going to have a big old side thing like there, like a little Kim Possible thing going on where she can have all that going on. She's got a bazooka and the bazooka has to be strapped. We're not necessarily going to see the strap, but I will start to think about the idea that there's a strap coming through there on a bazooka. All right. <laughs> <laughs> so that's that's where we're at with this. Uh, what is your advice to any artist thinking they are they are is a subpar not good enough? Okay. Uh, you know, well, hey, we all feel like that. I felt like that. I go through that still today where I feel like that. I do a design and I look at other stuff and I go, man, all you got to do, I, I, I look through Tumblr from time to time, not that much, but when I see it, I'm like, oh my gosh, look at all these artists or on Instagram. I'm like, oh my God. But the best thing you can do is just know that you are not them. Be yourself. I don't know. I can't remember the author that said this. Be yourself because everyone else is already taken. Just be you. That's the most important thing is just be you because that's where you have to know that you're going to be learning on your own learning curve. You're going to be drawing the amount of times you're going to be drawing. These are things you're working on, but don't let that sort of like stop you. Um, villains in the airport, please fill in. Uh, with the quarantine going on, how do you keep productive mindset at home and avoid wasting time? You have to start a project. I'm working on projects that I don't expect to have make money right now. This is the problem. Too many people are working on developing stuff or trying to get stuff done because they want instant gratification. They want the money now. They want things to be shown now and seen now. You have to have the mindset that you're building a brand. 
That's what you're trying to do. So work on your brand. Who are you? Who do you want to be? What do you want to be? What do you want to sell a year from now? What do you want to have in stores two years from now? Work on those things and that's what's going to carry you through this. But absolutely, I don't care. Just start a project, even if you don't know what it's going to be yet. You know, but it's going to be like, because I know everyone has something in their mind. Wow, I'd love to make my own book of something. I'd love to make my own comic. I want to make my own cartoon strip. I want to, I don't know. Those are the things you got to do, okay? Um, any good books on how to write for comic books? Yes, but damn it. There was Scott something wrote a book on how to draw comics, um, which is supposedly one of the best books on how to do comics that I've ever, that anyone ever taught, McLeod, Scott McLeod, I think was his name. Uh, so check out that book, all right? So before we wrap up here, I'm just going to read from you guys on my website, if you're interested, I've, I've been working on just a new title through this, but it's called Conquering the Artist Struggle is on my site. It's a different color, but this one is called Breaking Through Barriers. You can get it on Amazon too if you want. It's called uh, Conquering the Artist Struggle. But I'm going to end this segment with a poem that I wrote for you guys um, that I read at the end of all my uh, workshops that I do. And it goes something like this. And it's called As Long As You Are You. All right, a poem that I wrote. It's in my book that I wrote on advice and anything else that you guys are interested in. There's no drawing. It's just my philosophy on life. So if you're interested in hearing my philosophy on life, it's called Conquering the Artist Struggle. And it goes like this. All I have ever done is enjoyed what I ever do. My mind was open. My mind was clear. I did not stop to think of fear. I open up my mind, think of an idea, put it into action and see what will appear. It can never be a failure because I learned along the way. If I did not succeed, I'll try another day. Stay calm and smile. Enjoy the things you do. Life will get much better as long as you are you. And that's the lesson here is you guys have to enjoy. You have to just take this time as a time to invest in yourself. This is where... The men are separated from the boys and we could say women or anything else, but this is where the men are separated from the boys. The men are going to just take this time and they're going to use this time to benefit themselves. They're going to start reading books. They're going to start educating themselves. They're going to start just learning. They're going to work on projects they've been putting off. They're going to clean out their closet that they've kept putting off. They're going to do so many things and this is your time to shine. Don't let this be a time of negativity. Don't let this time of being caught up in social media and looking at negative posts and people posting negative things, you know, of what the president or anyone else is doing. Why are you putting your energy into that? That's It's a virus when you're just spreading all this stuff because that's what a virus is. A virus... It starts with a host. There's something, there's a virus and that virus spreads out and it starts to infect other people. And every time people are sharing negative posts that's something the president said, it's just a negative post. And you're putting the mind of the president and anyone else in your mindset, why are you doing that? If you, if you don't like the guy, I don't care what your politics are, then you don't like the guy. So why keep um, just putting him out there and sharing things all the time? Just don't do it. It's just It just doesn't make any sense. Start reading positive stuff. You start posting positive stuff. And that's how you start to change things. And that's how you start to get the right mindset and the right focus because you're in a place of happiness. You're not going to let all this outside noise affect you, you're going to make sure that you're doing what we've been told to do. Our government has very clearly, and your governments, I know you guys are in Ireland and Italy and everywhere else, your governments have told you what to do. They're telling you to stay indoors. They're telling you to wash your hands all the time. They're advising you of all of these things. So just listen to those things. Your countries are calling upon you to follow the rules. So like Rosa, like um, Kennedy said, ask not what your country can do for you, but what you can do for your country. And it's things like that that I'm going to spread positivity. That's what I can do for my country. 
and stop with all the that stuff because that's where you get crazy. If you guys follow me on Instagram, you'll see a great cartoon that I posted today from Walt Disney back during World War II on panic and emotion, or what was it called? It was called something else, I can't remember. But um, just watch that cartoon, you'll love it. Uh, but it's still happening today, it's just you can even find a full length cartoon, which is about eight minutes long on YouTube, and I would advise you to do that. But it's just a reason, how to think, just re be reasonable, think about these things, all right? Um, despite I'd like to stay longer, I've got to go. I'll see you later. All right, man. Hey, guys. Thanks for coming in. Hopefully, this stays up on YouTube and it doesn't vanish. But thanks for being here. It was a fun hanging out with you guys. I'll definitely do it again. And uh, thanks for being a part of this and following me on YouTube all these years and my art talks. I appreciate you guys. And that's it. So have a great night. Have a great day. Have a wherever you are in the world. Just stay safe. Keep your hands clean. Just do what you need to do. Follow the rules that are being asked of you. And this will go away. It will. The world is going to be as hard as it is to hear. I believe the world is going to be a better place after all this happens. I really do. I feel very strongly about that, that things are going to work out. Things are going to be better. Social media is going to change. Uh, way work habits are going to change. Everything's going to change for the better. So don't think of this as doomsday. It's not. This is, this is a good thing that, um, I don't want to say a good thing. It's not a good thing, but it's, uh, it's, here we are, guys. Here we are. We're not on another planet. Here we are. All right. See ya. Stop streaming. And now the problem is here, how do I stop streaming? Oh, what is this? Let me stop streaming. Are you want to sure you want to stop the stream? Yes.